Over the past few months, I've been making a number of projects, such as these dizzy ball projects and these laminated knife handles. These projects were all made starting with uh, thin strips of wood, which were cut in the AccuSlice system, and then these thin strips of wood were glued together to make laminated boards, such as this. And in the case of Disney Bowl, I made even thicker boards, which I cut out rings, and then made my, my Disney Bowl projects. For the uh, knives, I made a laminated board, cut it at an angle, and this gave me these intricate patterns on my knife handles. In making these projects, most of my boards range between uh, as thin as maybe 20 thousandths of an inch up to an eighth of an inch thick. I'm now looking to make smaller versions of these projects. I want to make miniature Dizzy Bowl projects. And I want to make knife handles with more intricate patterns. In order to accomplish this, I need to cut thinner strips of wood. I want to cut strips of wood less than 10 thousandths of an inch thick, a maximum thickness of 45 thousandths of an inch thick. And then glue these strips up to make laminate boards, which actually have twice as many boards in the same thickness of a piece of wood. In doing this, I'll get intricate patterns such as these my knife handles, which will have twice as many layers of wood in the knife handle. And in the case of my Disney bowls, I'll be able to make miniature Disney bowls with the same intricate pattern uh, in the Disney bowl. But in order to accomplish this, I need to cut much thinner strips on the AccuSlice system. In fact, I'm calling these ultra-thin strips on the AccuSlice system. I want to cut strips of wood less than 10 thousandths of an inch thick, maximum thickness 45 thousandths of an inch thick. So this video will demonstrate the cutting of these ultra-thin slices of wood on the AccuSlice system. I'll be cutting a variety of different woods uh, to show how the different woods behave in cutting these thin strips of wood. Today I'm going to be cutting some ultra-thin veneers on the AccuSlice system. And the cutting veneers on boards are going to be 36 inches long by 2 inches wide. And getting down to thinnesses thinner than 10 thousandths of an inch. Really testing the limits of the system to see how thin of a board I can get off, off the system. Uh, first of all, I installed a brand new blade on my bandsaw. This is a half inch Timberwolf blade, 10 teeth per inch. And I've installed the uh, six foot rail on my AccuSlice system because I am cutting boards three foot long. So I need at least a six foot long rail. I'm starting off with uh, some boards. The boards I'm using today are 36 inches long. They're between an inch and, and two inches thick and two inches wide. So I'll be cutting two inch wide strips, 36 inches long on the AccuSlice system. And I've actually glued my board to my sacrificial fence. I don't want this board to move at all during the uh, cutting process. So I glued my board to my sacrificial fence, which is in turn attached to my 24 inch carriage on roller bearings. And of course these roller bearings ride on my rail on the AccuSlice system. And again, the advantage of the AccuSlice system is the, the board doesn't move laterally at all, so you get nice clean cuts with no bandsaw blade drifts. And now that's the only reason we could get such thin cuts, is because there's no uh, blade drift or lateral movement of that wood. So I'm ready to get started. I'll be starting with a piece of um, a red heart in this case. I'll also be cutting some kaduk, uh, some maple, and some walnut to see how, how thin of a cut I can get on different types of boards. And this first cut is just to give me a square surface. I'm running all the videos of cutting the boards at 10 times normal speed to minimize the time of viewing of this video. If you notice, I cut that fairly slow. A lot slower you probably normally cut using a, a blade for doing uh, and ripping uh, boards for veneers. Because uh, the slower you cut, the smoother the cut. And these boards aren't going to be run through a planer or a sander. They're going to be too, much too thin to even think about doing that. For this first board, I'm going to cut a board uh, 10 thousandths of an inch thick. Now I know my blade kerf is around between 45 and 50 thousandths of an inch. That is one full revolution on my index wheel on the AccuSlice system. So I can release my magnets, rotate my index wheel, one full revolution. That's my blade kerf. Then I'm going to dial in 10 thousandths of an inch. You know, 5 thousandths, 10 thousandths. And then lock my magnets in place. Now 
and there's my 12 thousandths dimension on that board. Again, look at the finish on that. That's no need to run through a planer center. That's good enough to glue up to make my multi-layer laminates I'll be making. So that's 12 thousandths. I'll make a couple more of that because I need a couple of those boards that same thickness. So again, the same thing. One full revolution for my blade curve. And then dial in 10 thousandths. I just finished cutting 10 boards, approximately 10,000 inch thick, so let's see what the variation in thickness is across these boards. I checked the thickness on all 10 red hard boards using a vernier, and the boards all measured between 12 thousandths and 14 thousandths inch thick. In other words, 13 thousandths plus or minus 1 thousandths of an inch. This demonstrates not only the accuracy, but also the repeatability of slicing boards with the AccuSlice system. So now let's see if I can get down and cut uh, a 5,000, half that thickness uh, with the AccuSlice system. So instead of advancing my wheel 10,000, I only advance it 5,000. So again, one full revolution for the blade curve, and then 5,000. So this is my strip of wood. Let's mic this, see what it comes out as. I got five and a half thousandths. Uh, again, this shows that the AccuSlice system, very accurate cutting a board, you know, five thousandths of an inch over 36 inches of length and two inches of width. So I'll be going to cut another one on the same thickness. Here's our second board. It's measuring around six thousandths of an inch. So the question is, can I go even thinner? Let's try going down a thousandths. Instead of turning this five thousandths, I'll just turn it four. This actually is measuring right around four thousandths of an inch, four and a half thousandths. And that's pretty much the limit of the system. The board is the wood's actually splitting at that point. Not sure I could even use that for anything so thin. Questions come up is, you know, can a, can a system cut hard wood? And actually, hard, close grade woods like this uh, red heart actually cut very well. It gave very little uh, fuzzies at the bottom edge where the blade cuts through the board and gives nice smooth cuts. In fact, it's a tight grain wood, and it's a hard wood, and actually cuts very well with the AccuSlice system. And you cut very thin boards quite accurately. Okay, next I have a piece of yellow heart on here, and I'll be making, uh, first of all, my sacrificial cut just to get my uh, board straight, and then I'll be making a couple of uh, slices, a uh, ten thousandth of an inch thick. This first cut of this board shows why I need to do this first cut to uh, get the board flat and square. Because this board is not perfectly straight and parallel. Down here at the end, it's, you know, 40 thousandths of an inch thick. Here in the middle, it's 50 thousandths of an inch thick. And down here, it's 43. So you have a variation of, you know, almost 10 thousandths of an inch in thickness from that board. So that's why that board cannot be used as a, as a board for my system. It's just it's a sacrificial piece I cut off just to give me a flat square per, uh, surface. Now every cut on this board will be perfectly flat and straight. A total of 12 boards were sliced at the 10,000th inch setting on the AccuSlice system. When measured with a vernier, all 12 of the boards measured between 11 and a half and 13 thousandths inch thick. So now I'll go and slice two boards five thousandths of an inch thick. So 
Personally, I'm measuring about a seven thousandths. And seven thousandths also. So two pieces of wood, about seven thousandths. Kind of pushing limits. You can see it broke out at the very end, but the center portion is all good. Seven thousandths of an inch. Okay, this next board I'll be cutting a piece of maple, and this is a, a thick board. Uh, we'll be cutting some boards, 20 thousandths, 15 thousandths, 10 thousandths, and then see if we can get things a little smaller. But uh, I do need some 20 and 15 thousandths inch thick board, which I'll cut first. I sliced a total of 14 maple boards at the setting of 20 thousandths of an inch. All 14 of the boards measure between 20 thousandths and 23 thousandths inch thick. Again, a repeatability of plus or minus a thousandth of an inch thickness between the various boards. Now, these boards weren't quite as nice as the, uh, the red heart. See, there's a lot more fuzzies on the bottom. But to get rid of those fuzzies, all you need to do is uh, take some 220 grit sandpaper, put your whole bundle together, and just And of course, the other thing you get on these boards, where it kicks out the end of the bandsaw blade, you get a, a little bit of a, of a burr. Let me show that a little bit closer here. Now you can see this burr here. And all it requires is a chisel or sandpaper. You know, we'll take those off. So that's it. Just sand the bottom edge to get rid of the fuzzies and uh, get rid of that burr. Okay, now I'm ready to cut my uh, 10,000 inch thick board. A total of eight boards were cut at the 10,000 inch setting. All the boards measured 13,000 plus or minus 1,000 inch thick. I still have enough wood left to cut one more board, 5,000 inch thick. And that measures six thousandths. So out of that one board, I got fourteen boards, twenty thousandths. I got four boards, thirty thousandths, uh, and I got uh, eight boards, ten thousandths, and one board, uh, five thousandths to six thousandths inch thick. For this next board, I have a piece of a walnut left over from my fake my uh, knife handle project. Uh, so I'm going to cut a couple boards off here, uh, ten thousandths of an inch thick. So I have three pieces of walnut. That measures thirteen, twelve and a half, and twelve. And you see that I got that last board cut down almost right to the sacrificial fence. And that was because when I set the system up, I tilted my table to make sure the blade was perfectly parallel to my sacrificial fence. And as a result, I cut all the way down almost to the glue line on my board, so I don't waste much wood at all. But there's uh, some walnuts, 10,000 an inch thick. This is the result of slicing the ultra-thin boards on the Atkins Life System. I was able to cut boards 10,000 an inch thick and thinner. Uh, these boards, such as this maple, red heart, and yellow heart, these boards are all 5,000 of an inch thick. Uh, very, very thin. In fact, they're so thin, I'm not, not sure I can even use them in my project. I think they're just too thin. They'll start ripping up as the end of this one board started doing, uh, just because they're so thin. However, cutting boards 8,000 of an inch and thicker were very nice on the Atkins Life System. These boards here, I have red heart, yellow heart, maple, and walnut. These are all 10 thousandths of an inch thick and very, very accurate. When I um, mic these with a vernier and measure them, you know, edge to edge, top to bottom on a board, they're within a thousandth of an inch. When I compare uh, multiple cuts, such as cutting multiple boards, all the same thickness on the AccuSlice system, 
they're within two thousandths of an inch tolerance from one board to the next. So the system is very accurate and precise in cutting these boards. In addition, the surface finish is very good. There's no need to sand these boards for gluing. The only sanding that's required is sanding the fuzzies off the bottom, particularly on maple, which has a lot of fuzzies when you cut it. Sand the edge off uh, with some 220 grit sandpaper. And then at the end where the board kicks out the bandsaw, you get a little bit of a burr. You've got to clip that off with a, a chisel. Other than that, there's no surface sanding required. The surface is good enough for gluing these boards up. So in summary, uh, the system worked quite well. I was able to cut boards down to less than 10,000 of an inch thick, and I'll be using these boards to make some laminated boards for some of my future projects, such as some miniature Disney bowls and some more intricate knife handle patterns.